the purpose of this exercise is to um, demonstrate the simple for loop. The user just provides a number of rows and then in the rich text box we display um, as many rows. The first row will contain a 1, the second row 1, 2 and the last row if the user said 15 rows the last row will contain all the numbers from 1 to 15. Now I've already created the interface so we have a text box where the user can enter the number of rows. Then the idea is if we click on the button in this rich text box um, that number of rows will appear in a triangular form. Okay, so the only event handler is the button's click event handler. So we're gonna, I'm going to start by declaring a variable for the number of rows. And we are going to build up um, the lines to be added to the rich text box one by one using a for loop. Those lines will, with each iteration, grow with one digit or with one number. So I'm going to declare a string variable called line. I'm going to initialize it to zero. So this will be the variable that we use to create the individual output lines. Okay, so we will get the number of rows um, from the text box. Ah, two in, sorry. Now we can write the for loop. Okay, so our for loop will have a counter. I'm just going to call the counter i. We'll start at 1. Then we have the condition which will test whether the counter is less than or equal to. And the upper bound for this for loop is the number of rows because we want the for loop to execute as many times as there are rows. Right, and the incrementation is just um, by one. So what should happen inside the for loop? Remember, we want to build up a line, then add that line to the rich text box. So the line starts, at the moment the line is empty, we initialize it as the empty string. And now we're going to say line is equal to line. plus the current value of the counter. Okay, so we can't just say line plus i, or can we? Okay, it's happy, so we don't. i is an integer, but if we write the, the assignment statement like this, i is implicitly converted to a string. When i is 1 and line is empty, this line of code is going to add the digit 1 to the line. Now we want to put that in the rich text box. So my rich text box is called rich text box output and we want to add to what is currently there. So I'm going to say plus equals line. So what is currently in the um, text box will be included. Okay, so we just want to add the new line to it, right? But we want to also skip to the next line. So that is what the slash n does there. Okay, so to just recap, we get the number of rows to display in the rich text box from the user. That will be the upper bound of the for loop. So the for loop goes from 1 up to number of rows. For every iteration of the for loop, we add 
the next value of the counter to the current line. So initially the line is empty, then it adds 1. In the next iteration, the line is 1 and it adds 2. So then it becomes 1, 2, and so on. So every time we've created the line, we add it to the current text in the rich text box. And because we end each line here with the slash n, it moves the cursor to the next line so that when we, in the next iteration, add something to the text box, it will be added to the next line. Okay, let's quickly run the program. There's still one thing that we have to do, but I want to demonstrate to you something. Say I say 10 rows, I click display, it displays the 10 rows. Say now I want to display only 5 rows and I say display rows. What happens? It keeps the previous 10 rows and it just displays those 5 rows at the end of that. Okay, so how do we fix that? It means that every time we execute the whole event handler, okay, it still takes the, the text that's in that rich text box um, and just starts adding the new lines to that. So before we go into the for loop, we have to clear the rich text box by calling the clear method. Okay, so if we now run the program, and we say 10 display rows, and we then say 5. If we now click on the button, it will first clear the text box and then display the 5 rows. 